A second reason is my monthly column in Wired magazine. The rapid and astonishing success of Wired has shown that there is a large audience for information about digital lifestyles and people, not just theory and equipment. I received so much thoughtful feedback from my text-only column that I decided to repurpose many of the early themes, because a great deal has changed even in the short time since those stories were written. And that is what they are, stories drawn from years of inventing new systems for computer graphics, human communications, and interactive multimedia. Digital 7 the third is a more personal, slightly ascetic reason. Interactive multimedia leaves very little to the imagination. Like a Hollywood film, multimedia narrative includes such specific representations that less and less is left to the mind's eye. By contrast, the written word sparks images and evokes metaphors that get much of their meaning from the reader's imagination and experiences. When you read a novel, much of the color, sound, and motion come from you. I think the same kind of personal extension is needed to feel and understand what being digital might mean to your life. You are expected to read yourself into this book. And I say this as somebody who does not like to read. 8-B-I-T-S-R-E-B-I-T-S-T-H-E-D-N-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N bits and atoms T he best way to appreciate the merits and consequences of being digital is to reflect on the difference between bits and atoms. While we are undoubtedly in an information age, most information is delivered to us in the form of atoms, newspapers, magazines, and books like this one. Our economy may be moving toward an information economy, but we measure trade and we write our balance sheets with atoms in mind. GAT is about atoms. I recently visited the headquarters of one of America's top five integrated circuit manufacturers. I was asked to sign in and, I in the process, was asked whether I had a laptop computer with me. Of course I did. The receptionist asked for the model and serial number and for its value. Roughly, between one and two million dollars, I said. Oh, that cannot be, sir, she replied. What do you mean? Let me see it. I showed her my old power book and she estimated its value at two thousand dollars. She wrote down that amount and I was allowed to enter the premises. The point is that while the atoms were not worth that much, the bits were almost priceless.